14 podcast presented by Sports Interaction, your homegrown sports book, Bet Local. And folks, we got ball to talk about. We just watched one of the just the typical Toronto Blue Jays roller coaster. We are joined with a very special guest, an OG friend of the show. It is it is Zoops, the Zoops on Twitter, our guy, OG Blue Jays Twitter guy. Zoops, how are we feeling, man? I mean, you had a good comment in the group chat earlier that I'd love for you to make public. Which was the, I mean, I got a lot of good comments. Well, it was the one about like everything, all the pregame takes you, all the preseason takes you had, that one. Yes. Everything that happened this week that that reinforces something I already thought, that is real. Anything that doesn't is just small sample size, which is good because a lot of the stuff I thought got reinforced in the last four days. So I feel great about a lot of my takes. So I'm doing great. Awesome to watch ball. Two of the worst offensive performances we've ever seen, coupled by two of the greatest we've ever seen. Um, <laughs> why Jays is coming on here. We're seeing him. He will be here as well. But Zub's an awesome 40 and 30. Uh, less than Jays. You can catch that there. So Zub's, who, like, after weekend one, who were you? do you think you're the most right about? Obviously, you can't be right about anyone in four games. But where? Well, yeah, you can. You can. For sure. You can't be wrong, but you can be right. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what? I think, I think it might be, I just liked the way Vladdy approached the whole weekend, like took his walks, uh, obviously hit a 450 foot bomb, but like the, the, the Vladdy conundrum is so much a part of how the team goes. And I thought he was, he wasn't chasing away. He wasn't forcing himself into bad situations was like looking for his pitch. And when he got the opportunity to hit that huge home run. And I thought, Sometimes he can get a little, I don't want to say impatient, but like really wanting to make something happen. And that gets him out of looking for the thing that he can absolutely do the best, which is absolutely pound things over the middle and up. And he did that. So that was that was good because that sort of drives the whole thing. The other one, I'm sure we're going to talk about it, is Clement. Um, that was one where it was like, you're you're watching to see how this goes. And I thought, I thought pass with flying colors. So, so lots, 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 lots to like for sure. It was... Uh... It, it was because the thing about Clement that really fires me up is, is I know, like we talked about, it's only two game sample size he's playing in, but such an unbelievable spring, such an unbe- unbelievable season last year. And he kind of followed it up with the bat and the gloves. Some of the plays he was making at third base yesterday, mm-hmm. I know it's going to get swept under the rug because the Jays lost by a trillion, but was insane. Like the, the, the sliding in the third uh, to get the force out, the backhand plays, he makes in the hole. It's just insane what this guy was able to do in the field. And I can't speak enough about how good Ernie Clement was this weekend for this team that obviously needs it with the loss of Matt Chapman uh, at third base. But uh, the guy that really stood out to me this weekend uh, was, was IKF. I know we're, I know we sarcastically talk about IKF, like being that guy, all Isaiah kind of fucks, kind of fucks. He kind of fucks, but he was really good at the plate, like getting into deep counts not chasing, putting good swings on baseballs and not trying to hit a thousand home runs. Like he was just hitting the ball the right away, taking it where it was pitched. So uh, I know that IKF money's looking a little bit bad compared to other, some other contracts that happened this off season, but he was a guy this weekend too, and looked really good in the field as well. Right. Mm-hmm. It was uh, yeah. The Ahmed Rosario just coming in right away as <laughs> BNS would love to do saying, Oh, that's the guy we need instead of, uh, Isaiah kind of Falefa, but he was pretty good. Like people want to bury him quickly because of the money. It's not our money, man. Who cares? Who cares? At this point, he's on the team, but he battled pretty well today. Every anyone who goes, it'll be like the coaching tree for Bill Belichick or Nick Saban at some point. Whoever hits in the nine hole, the second leadoff spot's going to do well this year. That's fair. That's fair. We got to give flowers to Calvin Biggio as well. A guy yeah. that we were hard on a pretty decent amount last year. I was not familiar with the Calvin Biggio sandwich, as True RGM says, <laughs> uh, where he's bad at the end and at the start, but he's really good in the middle. Um, he's just all meat. Give me the meat, as uh, True RGM says. So Calvin Biggio is just unbelievable. Zoobs, I, I know we're in a tough spot here because Ernie Clement is kind of in that Calvin Biggio role where you play can play second, third, and kind of hit bottom of the order type. They're making it hard on us to pick who should we love. Like, who should we give our heart to, you know? Yeah, yeah. I thought today was telling Bo gets scratched at the last minute, and it's like you assume you could put Kiner Falefa at shortstop. I think going to Clement there is, like, really telling for me. I know it was quick, and maybe they didn't – maybe they have somebody, like, the, the prep is already done. 
But I thought Clement being the go-to backup shortstop was like, to me, I was like, that's interesting. That's a like, Ernie is to me, uh, maybe a peg above the the depth chart as to where we thought he may have been. Yeah. And Mr. Baby has joined us. No camera. Can we, uh, can we, get, a, can we get a mic check on Mr. Can we Baby? get a mic check on Mr. Baby? Because it doesn't show he has a mic right now on the participants uh, part of the stream. So... <laughs> Uh, Mr. Baby, who shows up 20 minutes late. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> He's here. Oh, we can't hear him. We can't hear him. He doesn't have the mic on. <laughs> he doesn't have the mic on, folks. We are in collapse mode. It's okay. Once he, We'll wait till, till he figures the mic. We'll keep going here while he gets that mic situation figured out. But, Avery, where are, where are you at here with the Ernie Clement experience in terms of just getting him reps? Because it's kind of... We talk about depth, but Davis Schneider looked great today as well. Obviously launched that home run, which is what he does every single time. He won't play for weeks on end or days on end, and then he'll come into the game and hit a home run. Uh, where are you at here? Because, like, there's only so many at-bats you could give guys. Like, there's so much depth pieces on this team. So where are you at with uh, Ernie Clement and the Davis Schneider and the Calvin Biggio aspect? So the thing is, uh, I don't know if you guys saw Paul DeYoung hit a home run today. Yes. I'm now in the in the way of you give anyone who is able to make it to the major leagues regular at bats and they will show a spark at some point. It's like uh, who brought it up in our chat today that I thought was really good. Seth yesterday, he said, what about the whole wow, platoon thing is it should work. We got a little bit of noise from Mr. We got a little bit of YJs. Yep. <laughs> um, there we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. We're good. We, Jesus Christ. Oh, man. Where am I? <laughs> He's good. Oh, All right. Mr. Jesus. Baby is here. Mr. Baby's here. <laughs> you will not be seeing him on camera. We will be seeing him. We're going to protect his identity because we're man of integrity. But that's a good point, Avery. I do think that makes sense. And that's what, a point... I look that bad. <laughs> no, you look great. I just don't want I don't want our followers are a little bit crazy. I don't want you to be a profile picture of someone and your identity be stolen when people are getting in Twitter arguments. So out of respect for you, we're um... doing that. Is that okay? I'm fine. I'm fine either way. Okay. Either way. Any way you want to go. He's fine either way. But uh, Avery, I did. Uh, that's a good point because I talked about it it with Luplo Avery, and he said like, it obviously he's best when he is playing every single day. But he said it's like that for every single guy. It's really hard to come off the bench and fucking hit. Uh, like it's hard to come off the bench and hit 96 to 98. It's it's impossible to do. So that's a really good point. That the more reps you get in games, the better you're going to be. But Santel Gaspinal kind of disagrees. Uh, second <laughs> half of 2022. Uh, Zooms, where are you at with this uh, with the, with this uh, team? Give me one. Give me one overreaction. Like maybe the offense is back. Like what's your biggest overreaction from this weekend? Oh, biggest overreaction is th is that they've 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 figured out the balance of the lineup a little bit better. I think last year with with the Chapman swing and miss and the 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 rejuvenation of the energy of the Buffalo guys, like those guys not coming in mid season and sort of providing that spark they did last year having them in there the whole way young guys hungry guys you sort of get a bit of what the team was when it first started this window I think is really important a guy like Ernie a guy like Davis who is like they feel like every time they're out there they're competing to prove themselves as major leaguers no complacency no veteran attitude um I think that rubs off in the right way on the rest of the team that's my overreaction is is guys like Ernie and Davis are are helping sort of bring a rejuvenated youth movement to a team that had gotten a little stale. YJs, what about you? I mean, let's go into this weekend for you. I, I mean, two games were made my eyes bleed. Uh, Saturday, <laughs> Saturday, Friday. Woo! Unfortunately, one of them was a Friday beer stream, which was potentially one of the worst streams. I was hungover as shit uh, and had to watch the offense just refuse to hit baseball. So that sucked. But what was like uh, your reaction from this weekend? There was obviously so many positives in this lineup. Uh, from this weekend yeah it's well I love the sandwich at least it's like <laughs> start good and good awesome um god it sucks to get carved by people sitting 91 and a half <laughs> like god you just go and you're just like I don't know about you guys did you see a lot of especially the lefties um high cutters oh my i like, was i was gonna send you the message how many 
88 mile an hour cutters did we see this weekend? It felt like every single guy. And when the Rays do it, you think they're on something. When a <laughs> shitty organization does it, you think, oh, uh, they're throwing shitty pitches. No, it's kind of the Bassett um, cutter plan. Because, um, God, Bassett is just reverse of what you think, right? It's like so breaking balls in and up and then sinkers up. It's like pitching coaches 20 years ago are seething. <laughs> just like down and away, down and away. Uh, but yeah, that was one of the things I noticed just because, God, you're not getting blown away. And it sucks, especially like swinging through fastballs, like middle up too. It's just like weird, not weird, but like annoying pitching plan that kind of did get executed for the Rays. Uh was awesome to hit Eflin. Just should should take him out, you know? Hitting Clearly. hitting <laughs> Zach Eflin, uh, but getting carved up by Little or Littell is like yeah. the most Toronto Blue Jays ass shit on the planet. Like it's it really is. Like you hit the guy who's the opening day starter for the team, the big dog, not named Shane McClanahan, and then Zach Little, who was pitching in McCook Community College two years ago, carves your team up. It just doesn't make any sense. But what I noticed, YJ, is this team, especially today, although they hit really well, they were doing the Matt Chapman effect. Middle in fastballs or middle, middle fastballs, they were all just swinging right through it. Uh, it was the Matt Chapman uh, effect from last season. But I got it to my cap. Matt Chapman's a Hall of Famer after this weekend. Looking great and same with Jordan <laughs> Hicks. But uh, Zoobs, I mean, this offense, if this offense could just maybe stay consistent it'd be better because i just i can't deal with two of every four games having to watch legitimately no offense it's gonna make me sick how about the two games into the justin turner era everyone was like oh <laughs> is he cooked is he completely <laughs> cooked <laughs> on sunday two swings with runners on and it's like oh thank fucking god well uh, i think <laughs> the his profile from last year told us exactly what was gonna happen yeah. it's crush left-handed pitching uh, second best on the team would have been last year. Way to run straight a plus against lefties and cannot hit a forcing fastball. It's just Evident. how things went last season. So uh, at least he has a better welcome to the team than Brandon Belt did last oh season. Oh my God. He was on Terrace Watch. There's a video I had to, to delete on the Gate 14 podcast Twitter of me screaming terrorist at Rogers Center <laughs> after a Brandon Belt at bat. Um, there is a video of me doing that out there. But I will say the Justin Turner experience from today, it is so cool to have a hitter on your team where he's up runner scoring position in your mind. You're like, this motherfucker is going to come through. Like they showed the stat. The dude is hitting 333 with bases loaded. Is that not absurd? I think, yeah. it's, be I think it's better than hitting worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> what a swing on Justin Turner. I love oh, it. God, I love it. And he's looking up and... He gets it, and he just looks amazing. <laughs> the way that he finishes his swing, I think, is what does it for me. Like, the one-handed kind of, like, elevated finish is unbelievable. He is doing the anti-age thing, and that's why uh, we're, we're <laughs> just the – we're the anti-age boys, Brandon Belt and uh, Justin Turner. But Justin Turner in this lineup is awesome, and the fact that there was people today on Twitter – crying about this lineup and then they put up the most runs they put up the entire series is just that's blue jays ball baby that's what that is did you think it was more defensive they were complaining about where people were playing defensively because the justin turner experiment at third base <laughs> might be over folks <laughs> it might be oh like Woo! put him at second base he played more second base last year did he not i feel like watching yeah. him have to try to get to the bag on double yeah. plays would be a little bit tough <laughs> <laughs> it'll be I don't want him moving to his true. Right I didn't think about that, pivoting. but it'll be like it'll be like playing with the uh, with your like Zoobs' son. It's like, okay, <laughs> Sam, I got this. I'm gonna do uh I'm gonna go <laughs> cover second base for like running from the hole to have yeah. to touch second base and throw to first because <laughs> turns he's still not making it there on time. I love Justin Turner. I want to make that clear. He is my DH though. I don't want him playing in the field. Uh that's like putting I mean. It would be like, I mean, Brandon Belt was really good at first, actually, last year, so it's kind of a hard comparison, but watching Justin Turner at third, the bunt down the line, and then he just launches the baseball into <laughs> orbit uh, down the foul line, and then today, the fucking throw he had to first, 
it wasn't even in the frame. Like I was on TV, you're watching it. The camera didn't even pick up where the throw went. It went like way off of the frame. So where do you have him on your depth chart, YJ's, uh, for third base? Would he be the third guy now? Maybe four? Well, fuck, it was kudos to them to actually doing it. <laughs> like actually stepping up and writing his name in at third. I, I was so off. Like he's not going to see an inning there. And then like... First off, he like he gets thrown there after all the moves in game three. And it's like, OK, cool, whatever. We're managing. We're having fun. And and to come back and he's he's starting at third after <laughs> after the the bunt throw that, you know, started a a war. <laughs> so sick. So sick. Yeah. And Zoom's had a really good tweet. It's like when you place a bet on a UFC fighter and immediately <laughs> right when you put that money down, I actually say that. I'm the best at knowing when a bet is dead within the minute of the of the game being on. That's what that is like. You put him at third, first ground ball, you're like, oh fuck. Yeah. Oh that's shit. not gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm I in... think it's funny mode. You put him in when it's eight one. You put him in yeah. when it's eight two. I, Let's get, I would get like to here. have Vladdy play third base instead of Justin Turner. Oh, that would be kind of tough. The footwork, the footwork <laughs> would be we're, difficult. We're, we're whining about him at first. <laughs> Let's what? let's move him to third. <laughs> Over under YJ's. How many innings does Vladdy play at third this year? Ten and a half innings. Oh. Over or under? Like I think you think under. Way under. under. Yeah, I was gonna go under. half an inning. I think ten and a half <laughs> innings <laughs> under that. <laughs> yeah. what, did, what? what did he do last year? None. Zero. None. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. No way. They have so no many. Way. They have so many guys. They would slide in before that. I. I, I, just, I think it'd be who's he playing third four. Yeah. I think it'd be funny. I think it'd be funny having Vladdy run it back at third base like the good old days when he got called up and just not really being that mobile or good at third base. But I will say he did save a – I will give his fla give flowers to Vladdy. Today he made a couple of plays at first stretching-wise and picking balls from the shortstop-wise where I was like, all right, this guy's kind of figured it out a little bit. But he'll do that. And then he'll just have the play like he did on Friday or oh Saturday God. when he just stretches to his right candy hop. And it's just like, how did you drop that? <laughs> like, Zoom, when you saw him drop that, was your immediate reaction like mine? It was like, that was like the biggest candy hop I've ever seen. It's it's all you can ask for a throw that deep in the hole, right? Like, true, Johnny, you're a first baseman. You, you yeah. understand. You I know. I, I picked that. Pad. I, it, I was I was blown away, but also immediately like this is exactly the kind of insane thing that I need to happen to to watch some fireworks. I'm very set in my ways that if it's going to go bad, I want it to go bad in a funny way, and that fit absolutely perfectly. I was like, people are going to go insane about this, and you're going to get you're going to get Bo insanity, you're going to get Vlad insanity, oh, two of the we, best flavors we can possibly ask for. And we got a ton of Bo insanity this weekend. Bro, so did we ever? Oh my god! <laughs> I my thought, mentions were uh, someone commented on our TikTok uh that said Bo should be the DH because he could just hit and can't field and Ernie should play short Biggio at second Turner at first like I I've gotten stuff like that um the Bo discourse is bananas to me because the way that Blue Jays Twitter talks about Bo Bichette you would think he is literally a blind person playing shortstop this guy <laughs> only made eight errors last year eight same as Corey Seager, who's considered a good shortstop defensively, or a decent shortstop defensively. Eight errors, cut his DRS in half, I believe, cut his outs above average in half, has clearly taken strides at being a good shortstop, had one mishap last year. I don't know if you guys remember it, uh, the Philadelphia Phillies game where he made the air and they walked it off in Philadelphia. That was the mishap he had. But other than that, though, like this guy has been a serviceable shortstop who is the best hitter on natural hitter on this team it's crazy to me that blue jays fans hate this guy so the the, the vlad play was i again this happens a lot whenever i have a thought i just text the chat i wanted to know the velo on it and what his average was because i thought that was the hardest he'd thrown a baseball in forever like that was an actually good play in the hole and the arm looked really really good during a season playing shortstop taking all the balls you do it's i think it's gonna go down but that was that was great to see at first the one where it was the double play where he missed under Ernie made a sick, sick play on a ball like that today where he backhanded it. Bo, Bo just got his glove in front and then uh, some of the other stuff. It sucks when it's that early and the discourse from two years ago just comes back because he he made great strides last year. Uh, He's the one, good. 
the one ball up the mid, the one ball up the middle too. He didn't get to. I think a lot of other shortstops probably get that as well. But you yeah, can't be worse than the first weekend. Probably Bobichette, like it's not a knock on Bobuchet. If you if you could play competent shortstop and lead the league in hits back to back years, should have been three years in a row. By the way, if he didn't get injured, it took like he was out for a pretty decent amount. This guy just has to be a competent defender, and he's one of the best shortstops in the game. Like that's just not. That's just not a hot take. That's not me being a homer. That's not me being a Boba Shek guy. That's just plain and simple. Well, let's do, let's, do the, let's do the eye test here, John. The way Boba Shek plays shortstop and the way Ernie plays shortstop look like two people playing different positions. When you see like a slick fielder, when you go to a showcase and you're in high school and they have Latin American players face and then other guys, it just, it looks different. Ernie looks so much more slick doing it. And I think that's what people see if they don't want to look at numbers, right? Yeah, exactly. And Zeus, have you seen hate like this for a star player for the Toronto Blue Jays before? Because it is crazy. Like, was it like this in in, four, in like 15, 16 for guys? Or? There was a weird thing where people, a lot of people didn't like Batista when the team was, when the team underachieved and he was like, he would hit a bunch of home runs, but he was really brash, but they hadn't made the playoffs yet. There was a bunch of like backlash about that. So it is sort of like, even like even Vlad, right? If Vlad is a if Vlad's OPS plus is like one thirty, but not one sixty, people get really bent out of shape. It's a weird city in that way, right? You'll you'll take a guy who isn't as skilled as Bobuchet, and when he does anything right, you like you like celebrate it. It's a really weird way. I thought I thought you you mentioned Seager. I think that's a perfect example of like he actually grades out in terms of like arm strength and and some of the fielding stuff. Like Seager is pretty close to the same caliber of shortstop as he is just like you take that trade off 10 times out of 10 he's not crippling the team you mentioned it though I think the beginning of this season is such a weird time like people remember they crystallize the early April games for some reason because they're about to watch at least in the playoffs for a, like a month and then yeah. they'll come back and be like I remember this happening and this happening people are going to remember the bow airs for some reason. Thank God they won the first game and saved the second game for the shit game because they had lost the first game and then won the second game. It would be it would be a backwards weekend. But yeah, I think people do. People get really mad at, at Bo and Vlad more than they get mad at anybody else on this roster and, and sort of always have. Vernon Wells used to get booed all the time. Yeah, YJs, where are you at with Boba Shed? I feel like I, I just think it's crazy. I mean, I guess you, you make the point a lot of the times that Twitter is not a real place, but it gets to the point where... I'm assuming people this weekend got in a lot of bar fights. I know one of our Twitter followers did because they the guy guy at the bar just kept on hammering, hammering, hammering Boba Shett being bad, and the guy just started getting an argument with the guy about it. But where are you at with this Boba Shett discourse? Because it is so stupid and unnecessary. Yeah, that's summed up pretty quickly. I think he's a good player. <laughs> that's big of you to say. He's just good. I know. He's, he's good. No, no. Oh. In the... The the Seeger comps are awesome. Like, I think, I think he does it a little different than Seeger. Seeger is such like a statue with like great hands mm -hmm. of just like I'm gonna make a play. I'm gonna make a play. I'm not gonna like try too hard to get to everything. Like he's like he's not gonna dive and stuff. He's Corey Seeger. Like he's there to go be in the batter's box. And Bo's not quite that. Bo wants to make plays, and sometimes maybe it's like too much he's toned he's toned it down he's like throwing better the whole like i'm in my natural arm slot now i'm not being forced by oppressive coaches to throw like normal short stops uh and he i think he's throwing harder too and just a little bit just a little bit like from that throw in the hole like he's he's he did an arm program. He did a throwing program. <laughs> Maybe some drive line. Maybe some drive. Another big talking point this weekend that I wanted to touch on was the teams running on the Toronto Blue Jays just for free. Like it was the easiest. I think I could have stole a base this weekend. I I genuinely do think that. Um, where are you at with this, Avery? Because I know you wanted to do, uh, like obviously uh, break it down in, in a video and all that. So where are you? Is it more the pitchers or is it more like Alejandro Kirk and Brian Serv or Servin? Um, you can that? even like, say his name to his fate. Can you tell us the story of what you said? To yeah, I, I called him when we uh, were at dinner with Brian Servin. I called him <laughs> Brian Servin. He'd pretty much look at me like, who the fuck are you talking about? No, you said a, you said a fully wrong name. I think I said Swervin. I was yeah, also that's very what drunk. You called. That's I was cool. very drunk when I was talking to him, so I might have said <laughs> Swervin. Um, but yeah, Avery, is this more of a pitcher thing or a catcher thing? Because Gossman is not the quickest to the plate. No, um, certainly not. 
a majority of the guys that were getting stolen on this weekend were not quick to play. Every time Jose Siri, who was on the base this week at f- weekend, it felt like he stole second and third, like at will. So I have I have done a screen recording of a timer on my phone to go into <laughs> every stolen base, and I will do pop time and I will do time to the plate. Um, so um, you see on the base pass, Mike Pelfrey playing in the big leagues for a while was my pitching coach. He said. If they don't get to 12 feet leadoff, so it's kind of the cut of where the grass is uh, on every – said they're not going to be able to steal that base. Sure, you get a great jump. Things could go wrong. But if you're over that cut onto the grass, they can steal that base on you. Like They've gone far enough. And if you're a right-hander, it's 1-2 to the plate. If you're more than that and you have a faster runner, you're pretty much not going to get the guy out. Maybe mm-hmm. uh, Gabby Moreno – behind the plate might help oh, you out a little bit uh, <laughs> yeah exactly he is pretty good pop time but if you're not one to the plate for a righty and it seemed like a lot of high leg lifts from the guys so i'm gonna go into that and see how many were on the pitchers and how many were on the catchers but that was my like if i didn't have the thought of oh they get on base and they run every single time just like everyone else here probably had the thought i wouldn't even thought of making the video so it seems like they were just running at will Zoobs, do you think if you're the catcher in that situation, like you're going to the mound and being like, listen, motherfucker, you better start being quicker <laughs> to the plate because this shit's making me look bad. Like this is, I mean, th- th- at the end of the day, like that is something that gets brought up in negotiations. Like it sucks, but that's what gets brought up when you're d- negotiating deals or wherever. So at some point, if I was a catcher, I'd be like, are you kidding me, dude? Like, let's get quicker to the plate here, man. Can I cast aspersions and say that Jano would shut that down and just sort of <laughs> completely make that with zero with zero evidence that he would call for a pickoff play or would would throw something in there to mess up the timing or they had that great pickoff play in the in the spring where he dropped the glove and they went yeah you know what I think part of it is you sort of have to choose what you're going to give up right and I think they're deciding to choose to face the hitter 100 percent um and and not worry so much like not cost yourself a bad pitch by getting distracted. I think in the same way that we've seen them, you know, they've gone and got pitchers that are fly ball leaning pitchers because they're also going to go and get fly ball defenders. I think there's a little bit of that and the league in general is stealing um, at all time, great success rates. So it is a, they happen to find similar to the cutter conversation of like, are there, did the Rays unlock the league in throwing cutters up? It's like, have they unlocked the league in stealing more often than average? It depends. It's hard to extrapolate. Is this going to be a big thing? I don't know that Kirk is a is as you said, like a real deterrent from from guys in the base paths. And if teams think they can exploit it, maybe they will. I will. I will now since he's not around. I will say, uh, Jano would have stopped all that. He would have come out and done a mound visit, and he would have dropped his glove, and they would have done a back pick, and they would have done a pitch out. It wouldn't have happened more than once. True. I Jano's say, huge I, on back picks. He I noticed a pick. lot this team would, like, to this weekend, was wasting a lot of disengagements, like a lot of just stepping off the rubber, not even really trying to throw to first base. I don't know if that'll get addressed. I know they work on PFPs a pretty decent amount, even when they're doing, like, pregame stuff and all of that, but um, YJ's, where are you at with that? Because I know this team has pretty much been in the bottom, probably, like, the bottom percentile for throwing runners out for the past couple of seasons, right? Yeah, last I checked, like last season, Kirk and Jansen both were below average. Um, I think they include like with what your pitchers give you as well, um, below average at throwing out base runners. They're both they both kind of have noodles, like straight up. Love love both of them. I hope both are listening and aren't <laughs> mad at me. Um, <laughs> but there's a couple couple things like Ray's. Rays are going to run like team dependent. Like you go and face like the Astros are not going to run as much. They have a couple of guys that might run. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm stupid, but Jose Siri rocks. I've just, I, I need to quickly talk <laughs> about that. Like I said it, he is like, if you, if you maxed out Luis Robert, everything good and bad, except also made sure the hitting stayed horrible. <laughs> like that's Jose Siri. Like he's so cool. I hate that he's on the Rays, and he he's so fast. They just have a couple guys that were like, "I'm here to steal. We're gonna steal." Um, you know, 
And I remember last season, Kirk took like a month to build up his arm strength. I think there was straight up Chris Black threads of like Alejandro in spring training throwing like 70 to to, to second. Just like truly like me throwing a ball problem. No. Okay. I am I mean, <laughs> never mind. But so give him a month. He's going to be throwing runners out again. But the Rays are just fast and they're going to run. Yeah, they they have some voodoo magic. I am tired of hearing about the trot bullshit that continues to be uh, on Twitter and our mentions. That stuff is getting so goddamn unbelievably uh, tiring to to read. It it hurts my eyes to read it. To be honest, can we but, can we do the fi- the best part of the weekend? Can we do the the chat now? The best part of the weekend, yeah. the fight. Yeah, yeah, let's let's go into it. Um, I so I I wasn't aware of this fight. It sucks because I was in the parking garage at Alto's condo and I'm coming up the elevator and I just tweet. I just see like Twitter exploding like fuck Caballero, Caballero, fuck this, fuck that. So I just tweeted, I don't know what Caballero did or said, but he's a bum. And I just like that's the best way to address it. I'm just always going to ride with my Blue Jays guys. What a weird situation that was. From the bunt with two outs down the third baseline to Justin Turner launching the baseball into the bullpen to I don't really know how that fight started. I know Zoobs. What did you you said you saw something where he said like what did he say? So the way I see it is the throw comes into third and he's out by like four steps, right? He runs basically runs through third and Henny is waiting to back up the play and they bump. And what I assume is Caballero turns and it's like, hey man, don't touch me. Why would you touch me? And Henny is like, that, that isn't you getting bumped. This is you getting bumped. And then fucking gives them a shove. I love it because I want my relievers to be crazy. That's like the, when it talks about what, what does a reliever have to do? I want huge fastball, crazy breaking ball, and a psycho. Those are the only three things that I care about. So I was like, awesome. Three game suspension, couldn't care less. I want to do that, that that plays with like crazy eyes. I'm really excited about Yariel for that reason. Yariel is going to throw at somebody at this point this oh. year. too. Yeah, and we're gonna be like, why did he do that? And it's like, oh, they he's hated that guy for eight years. I was like, oh, yeah, he, he, he played him once in Cuba when they were like twelve, and he uh he pimped a home run off him when they were twelve. Yario Rodriguez is definitely like a a firecracker. He's definitely got some demons that he is going to channel on the on the mound for sure, like a j- little Jordan Romano type. But Avery was looking for spin zones because I was with Avery yesterday. We went for uh, kind of like a dinner thing. We were just chilling with our buddy Curtis. And uh, Avery was trying to find spin zones on why to blame Caballero for that. When I'll be honest with you, man, it was kind of all Henny Cabrera. No, who was see, I would love to, I would love to walk, bucket. I would love to walk through this. So I tweeted this at, at DJ because he's a race fan. He was trying to start shit. Wasn't mad at him. Uh, so he bunts at the oldest player in all of baseball. Okay. So <laughs> if I'm the pitcher on the mound, you know, you have a deficiency at third base, <laughs> Like you just, you know it, you know, what's going to happen here. He bunts the ball to him. And then the oldest player in baseball throws the ball away. So now you're double pissed off. You know that he's not going to play great defense. And then he throws the ball furthest possibly away. So then he keeps running. So he's trying to clown on your third baseman who can't play defense. Okay. So you're on the mound. It's like, just go fuck yourself, man. Like, what are you doing? And then he tries to continue the clown show by rounding second and going to third and out by a hundred feet. He's out that he doesn't even have a thought about sliding, right? <laughs> like there's yeah. no way he's thinking about sliding. Cause it's so embarrassing. He could get <laughs> tagged up the line. Uh, Henny, when you're taught to cover third base, uh, he was before the coach in between the coaching box and third base. That's not where you're taught to be at all. So there's a little bit on both sides, but then Caballero runs through the base as well. He could have just like hugged bow type thing. Okay. I'm out, whatever. It keeps running through. They just wanted to start shit with each other. They were there for a reason. He kept saying what's up to him. Right. And then he, pushed him in the face i do like that i like i like being about that action i really do i, I like caballero kind of expecting henny to bitch out and uh our paris texas merchant friend uh henny cabrera decides to be like you know what i'm about that action i'm gonna push you through the thing but i love the spin zone takes that some i'll say maybe a little bit of morons on twitter were saying that somehow boba got pushed it was like 
I that just didn't happen, right? Why, Jay's like the Boba Shut was he even really involved in that altercation. I don't even think so. No, but it it broke his neck, and <laughs> yes. I, I'm I'm so mad at Henny. No, God, what? Who who could have something to say about Bo on that? That's good for good for people being creative. Wait, is he is he on the low? Like, who do you not want to go into a fight with on the team? Man, um, like Romano. Have, no, sorry. I mean, you bring one oh, guy. Yes. You bring one guy on the team. You know, you're getting the shit kicked out of you. Who is that oh. guy you're bringing? Uh, it's Al- Alejandro Kirk. Yeah, <laughs> that's actually a really good one. I think Alejandro. I don't Kirk, think I get. get he work. wouldn't care. He wouldn't care. I just. I. He just has an awesome demeanor, but it just does not help in a fight. Of just like. Oh my God! Who cares? Let's get this over with a little bit, like like a um, um, a mound meeting with Alejandro. I he cares. He, he cares. cares. I'm, um, but it's such a. I was thinking of something stupid of like, starting a fight of like if you, like Caballero's like the hourly worker and then, Henny's on salary. Like, <laughs> no, I'll get it done. I'll get it done. No, I I don't need to waste time. It was, <laughs> it was so uh... sick. It was sick because we always see it in baseball, right? Where we have these guys that are just fake tough guys where they'll just get in each other's face and not actually throw punches. We've seen the Bryce Harper one where he tried to throw a helmet through Strickland, which was absolutely electric to use a weapon on the baseball field, which I think (laughs) should be allowed. Uh, Henny Cabrera pretty much saying, no, 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 no. I'm not even going to wait until you do something first. I'm just going to push you first. And shout out to BK for getting the still shot of uh, Cavalero's face just mushed like like a, like a like, UFC like, fighter. It was uh, it was it was just an all time altercation that realistically probably shouldn't have happened. The game was a blowout. Uh, that might have played a that factor definitely in plays why. into it with them being on defense. Yeah, how would how would you have felt? Because you would have fought someone probably me. Yes. Oh, I would have. Listen, I am an all time team morale guy. I loved getting into just chirping matches with other teams. Uh, I would do this thing, and this is a little baseball tidbit here for you, YJs, because you never played the game. You'll you'll, you'll understand it. Um, if a guy was pissing us off, right at the in the batter's box or during the game or did something stupid, I would always tell our pitcher to try to pick him off at first, and I would punch tag him. Like I would swipe tag as hard as humanly possible into the guy's rib cage when he would slide back to first base. It's kind of like a scumbag move by the first baseman, me, but I would I was the king of that. Like he would be safe by a million, like yeah. he wouldn't even really have a lead. And I would just bam right in the fucking rib cage with the tag every single time. We do it kind of multiple times in at bat. So I was really hoping we'd kind of get that from Vladdy, but he's kind of too nice to do that, right? So well that was never happening. He was playing him and uh Yandi were best friends all all weekend man love to see that from him yeah it was uh it was funny but yeah i do love uh, zoops what was your what has been your favorite kind of rivalry this team had with another what the jays have had with their team because for me it was the orioles when i was it robbie ray telling the manager to shut the fuck up was yeah. that robbie ray that rocks we, I, I need more of that and i could see like chris bassett doing that at some point i really can yeah, when Manoa was good, he was very good at making the <laughs> team like seethe with anger. Verdugo, uh, the Yankees, the Mercedes symbol. Um, I think, I think, I, I low key think the Rays is like a bubbling up. I think they actually really do hate playing the Rays. I really do think that there's a, as much as we talk about being sick of the trop trope. And we are sick of like the, oh, of course it's the Rays. I really do think they are sick of that team and sick of being there. And I can see it being frustrating of like, you sort of understand the Yankees and you understand the Orioles even being good right now because of the way they built their team. It would be really frustrating to continue to go into the trop and be like, we're better than these guys. I fucking hate being here and I hate playing them. And I hate that they walk around all spread up. So I would say like big picture, I think the best budding rivalry is is Baltimore, but I do think there's a little bit of like, I don't think they like the Rays at all. We have to talk about the belts on the Rays players. Those are some special. I'm on the the opposite side of history there, Avery. I like the players that wear wrong colored belts. I like the neon yellow belt on guys. I really do. I can never pull it off. The neon yellow makes sense for the Rays. It's a third color for them. It's, 
like the green ones when they're wearing their regular home jerseys or the pink ones or it's just it's just odd to me. They went Atlanta Braves mode, but I think all the Braves players who do it are cool. And that's the difference. Yeah. That's fair. I the Rays got good style. I hate to admit it. I love the chains that Jose Siri has. It looks like he's wearing lucky charm necklace that his child made for him. But Jose Siri kind of does rock. I think if Vladdy wore a necklace like that, um, Brad from Barry would want him dead. But that's just <laughs> that's just that's like Toronto Blue Jays fandom, man. I mean, that's just what it is. But uh, he does. He is swaggy. He is swag. Jose Siri is a sneaky guy that I kind of root for in the AL East. He is. He just is. Should we do awesome. the, the earrings were crazy too. The Razor yeah, yeah. earring game out of control, out of control. Siri and Rosarena, the danglies. A Rosarena's on steroids, right? Why, Jays? Is that <laughs> is that? <laughs> he's 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 on him him and Yan Yandi must have just. They're 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 really into, you know, biking. If, if you're getting my drift, <laughs> you know, just I think they did a they did a no liability. A, they did a steroid cycle, like when two friends get pregnant at the same time. Like that's what they did. It's like you know what? Let's, <laughs> let's do steroids. I can't inject together. it. I can't inject it. You have to do it for me. <laughs> that's what they did, and and it worked. Randy or Rosarina, I know we're keep pumping the tires of this race team. He fucking <laughs> rocks. He rocks. He's so good. He's so good. Not so. not a great pitch. Not a great pitch for Kevin Gossman to throw there. Um, yes, I had that middle middle. <laughs> so you usually try to know. usually try to avoid that one, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Kikuchi's was a little better. It was middle out. What what middle was the, on what the- was the worst the worst one the the Brandon Lau home run? Yeah, uh, that, oh, that was bad. so good. That was pretty bad. So bad, good. Yeah, which one? Which one was the worst pitch? Do you think? Um, uh, the Brandon Lau. That's yeah. candidate for just that was because that is a cutter directly into the barrel. It's like yeah, you you definitely dream... he did not want to be there. He knows. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you dream you dream of a pitch being that on a tee. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, Chris. I thought I thought you looked great most. Most of the start, the start of it, shit, you were striking out everyone. That was <laughs> wild. Like, first four guys, punchy, 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 punchy. Like, that was like, all right, now we go. I just think a couple mistakes, and the Rays are good at hitting mistakes. Like, that's just what they do. I, I Bassett will be fine. It's just the Rays are, yep. they're really good at fucking mashing mistakes and sending them to the, sending them to, uh, sending them to the moon. That's what, what they do. What do but- we think overall pitching wise? Um, we, we can go through, let's go through all of them. We'll go Zoobs, You, you take Barrios on, on Friday. Excellent. I thought he was excellent on Friday. I thought it was honestly, I thought all four guys were like about what I expected, but I thought Barrios was, was really nice. Like the home run he gave up on the first step bat is like, man, that's change up off the plate that got turned on no complaints. And then the rest of it was like what we've come to expect that mix that bread and butter that silky cl- uh, slurve i think is like a just a joy to watch that diagonal movement um i thought he was it was really relieving I, you know he's sort of been he had that real down year and then last year sort of back to who he was it was nice to see him be back to the exact like the exact three and a half era always going six or seven sort of cruise control never really worried gets like, occasionally gives up some pot but i thought he was um as advertised it was like Absolutely perfect. Um, what I hoped out of Rios's first thing, and we even, as I said, we, we even got the the candy of, oh, here we go again on the very first at bat of the yeah. year. So I couldn't paint it better myself. Yeah. Any, anything special about that start, YJ's from Rios? You thought command was there. Command was yeah. awesome. He's he's so good when he's on, just because it's so great. Like the stuff's there. The stuff's awesome. It looks awesome visually too. But like not to just like spam stuff in the zone and just be like, which is cool, which is shit. That's kind of Kevin Gossman. Like at least fastball wise, it's just like my heat map is in the zone. You're you're <laughs> getting a bat. I'm not worried about corners. It's awesome if I hit them. But Brios is just slurves away, change ups in, um, and then fastballs. Uh, 
sinkers on the outside to righties, inside to lefties. He did the one to, I think it was Caballero, that just locked him up. And uh, classic, like, everyone has to nod because it's just like, yes, that's what you did. We have to accept it. It was so sick. Uh, yeah, crisp. Crisp is what I have for that start. Yeah, and this is a question here for the people. Who do you think, which pitcher do you think has the highest ceiling on the team when they're on? Because I think it is Jose Brios. I think when Jose Brios is at his best, he is the best pitcher on this team. Just based off of the pitch mix. Uh, I mean, Kevin Gossman's like a two-pitch guy, obviously, which is still good. But Jose Brios' stuff is absolutely insane when he's on. And we saw it. The guy, when he's on, it is on the block, breaking stuff that's staying in the zone and then falling off. He's good at me. He's really good. So I, 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 for me, it's Jose Abreu. I don't know if you guys agree with that, but I think he has the highest ceiling on this team. Oh. There, there's a different way to think of it than highest ceiling because Gosman's ceiling is no one gets hits and he strikes everyone out. And yeah. I don't think Barrios has that as much as Gosman does every single start. Gosman, you're getting a fastball up in the zone or you're getting a splitter. That's never going to be a strike and you're going to swing at one of them and he's going to go deep into games as well. Brios's stuff is the most visually appealing of anyone on the team for sure. And I think it's sinkers in slurves away just looks sick. Just from any angle he pitches at the ball moves way more. It looks like on TV than anyone else on the team. So I still think it's, it's Gosman. I, we could take Gosman out of the conversation and well, he's, he's like, he's like a, a unicorn. Re- in reality like he's a Cy Young candidate obviously so I think for me it's pretty I don't know who it is for Zoo- like Zoo's would you agree with the Brio statement or I mean there's yeah. still some guys I think I think he's like the Brio's is like a perfect combination of what I like about Bassett and what I like about Gosman right where it's like execution at the highest level plus great pitch mix right it, it, it you mentioned that great command I think I think Gosman is very similar you, you mentioned it Avery it's like it's fastball up or it's splitter down but like when he's really dialed in, both of those things can't be touched. And with Bassett, when he's at his absolute best, you just don't know which pitch is coming. And that a lot, like he gets, I think he, I think he was top three. Bassett was last year in three pitch strikeouts because once he got Oh one, people just didn't know what was coming next. And, <laughs> and, and Brios has some of that, like, uh, especially once he's up um, in the count, the, the pitch mix basically goes like every, all four of his pitches are in the 20% zone. So like he'll throw anything at any time. And if it's crisp and if it's moving, I think that gives him a real advantage in, you know, it's such a razor thin margin of, of good and bad. I think if you're able to get that split second delay of not quite being sure what's coming, you can get yourself a lot of bad at bats from the other side. And I think, that's what we see when he's really locked in. So I would agree with the Avery. And if we're talking about like ceiling as in the perfect combination of like stuff and control and mix, I think it's Barrios. What about you, YJs? Yeah, I have Alec Manoa. <laughs> <laughs> he does rock when he's on, though. I he's will say yeah. that's a good point. When he's buzzing, that dude is a freak. I sometimes will, like, when I'm bored, I'll watch videos of Manoa from 2022 and be like, this dude was sick. Like, this dude was throwing 94 on the black and then would just talk shit to, like, some janitor for the Boston Red Sox who just stunk, <laughs> which is, like, calling him his bitch. I will say, that's a good point. I mean, I know it was sarcastic, but Alec Manoa does have, like, a an insane ceiling when he's on. I just, we haven't seen it in two years, but um, he definitely does. He's when him at his coolest is just like i'm throwing you fastballs and i'm huge so it just looks like i'm punching you in the face with fastballs yes so just like right into the batter's box just like huge man uh i hope you recover fast yeah hope you recover fast uh carbon monoxide detectors got a hold of them as the kids say but uh i <laughs> Two guys I wanted to talk about that looked really can we, good. Can we for do me the Kikuchi this... talk too? Yeah, we'll get in the Kikuchi talk, but I wanted to talk about these two guys. Nasty Nate might be back, folks. Um, he's making me feel things on the bump. Uh, he really is. He is throwing fucking fuzz. And YJ's, I'll, I'll, I'll kick it to you here because that's your guy, but he was shoving. I know he came in like the Chris Paul meme, like he drills a three down 30. But uh, kind of meaningless <laughs> games he came into, but he looks really, really good. He really does. 
No, he does. Uh, why is he so scared to throw 100? <laughs> He's very scared of it. Four seam velocity down two miles an hour on average today. But there's he's more command. So scared there. of a hundred. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, he's 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 breaking balls right now. I didn't get to watch him today, but lots of breaking balls and then surprising with fastballs. That was the first outing. And it was sick. It was awesome. Um throw a hundred. Seriously. Seriously. It's easy. Everyone Love can do name. it. But the next guy that I didn't want to talk about, and I'll kick it to Zeus for this, is Mitch White looks. Yeah. Holy shit. Like, I was looking at the radar guy. I was texting my buddies. I was like, Mitch White just hit 98. Like, what yeah, the man. fuck? What are they going to do when some guys, like when Swanee and Romano come back? Like, who are the two pitchers you send down? It's a weapon. It's a, He's a weapon. I think Parsons probably. Parsons for sure, obviously. But, yeah. like, who's the second guy? Pearson? Uh, who else? Yeah, who else snuck on into the into the bullpen? I guess Pearson, right? Yeah. Um, Because he nobody else is optionable. They don't have that extra optionable guy other than Maybe the maybe the the solve is to let Henny serve the suspension <laughs> for three games. Um, man, I love it. I, I love it. it. It's people like have this weird thing with like, oh, they don't have the starting pitching depth, and it's like, what team are you thinking about that has eight starting pitchers? Like, what are you, how, what are you talking about? But they low key do have like seven guys. If if we're if we're gonna have Manoa as a as a bit of a hanging chad here, I was really impressed with White because. Um, I know we associate with a lot of Mitch White guys, and I was like trying to be very cautious because I was like, boy, the heat maps last year was like a lot of meatballs. It was a lot of slider in the middle. It was a lot of, you know, that the difference between 94 and 96 is pretty stark. It just you're allowed to get away with that much more. Touching 98 is bananas, man. That that is <laughs> That is real serious trouble. Um, I'm into it. What a weapon. And and a guy that you want to succeed. I know he, he went on this show. He talked to you guys. That was really eye-opening to me of like his mindset seems right. He seems like a guy that's set up to succeed. He, he sort of takes the right lessons and thinks about it in a way that I really enjoy. And, and you end up really wanting to root for him and really wanting it to succeed. So I was really happy to see him. You know, we've seen in 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 the years past the guy that gets put into the situation that he was put in today of like you're you're sort of taking over for Gosman who gets you as far as he can on a pitch limit. That guy is sort of struggling. We saw Wes Parson sort of eat innings like my toddler eats lunch. Like technically he is eating, but it's taking like an hour. And then by the oh, end, geez. I'm like, yeah, by the end, I'm like, okay, lunch is over. That's that's what's happening. Um, <laughs> Mitch White was like a real weapon and really throwing gas. So. Um, I felt great about it. I really did. How many Mitch White starts do we get this year, Avery? One. Probably. One. Yeah. You think we got a singular Mitch White start? Yeah. I want to say three. Okay. It's the cold strikes and whiffs weren't there today. Everything was just like happy to stay in the yard. And I, I hate to do the bad thing. He maxed 94 9. I think you got exit yeah. velo. Uh, you, got, yeah. you got exit velo on one of the pitches. Oh. Um, no, that we'll say hit. 98 for the narrative. He's at 98. Yeah, he's yeah. At, yeah he, he was. Johnny and I, I swear, it, 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 there was a pitch he threw 98 on stream. It was when I was by myself watching the stream when I said it. But I yeah, guess you didn't have anyone like, to fact check you, I guess, then. That's yeah, fine. no one fact checked me, which is. <laughs> I'm, uh, here, for you. I'm here for you, John. No, no we, we just want. Stream we just, the next Mitch White step is swing and miss often. Yeah. And we we didn't see that today. I mean, you can nitpick anything you want in baseball based off stats. He got a ton of outs and he gave up one hit, right? At the end of the day, he is going to be confident into his next outing after that one. I yeah. can't when be, he has to face like, I, I wouldn't be super like, oh, awesome. Mitch White starting. Now he gets his chance when it's the Mitch White start. But he, he was very good today. And you were talking about Kikuchi earlier, Avery. I, I guess we can go into that. I kind of have a take that I think, I don't know if people are going to agree with, I think he pitched well yesterday. I think he got fucked by John Schneider making him go through the order three times. Because that's what we've learned. YJ's always supports the early hook. And now it's kind of all <laughs> I'm kind of on that side of that. But he looked great the first two times through the order. The third time they were kind of sitting on pitches, spinning on stuff, and hitting the ball hard. And they kind of kept him in that game and kind of screwed him. I know they needed innings from him, but um I do think that third time through the order that has killed Kikuchi a lot in the past is what fucked him in that start. I think he was actually pretty good on uh, on Friday. Saturday. 
But, Saturday, sorry. Saturday. <laughs> everything's mixed up. Um, it was the walks again that kind of killed. It's so the Blake Snell thing, as YJs would know, is no one can fucking hit. Everyone gets on base by walk. Kikuchi did the bad thing of here's six hits and here's three extra runners that killed them at that point too, right? You, you just can't do both of those things and think that the outings are going to go. Yeah. Right. It's, it's kind of got to be one or the other, I think. Uh, the stuff looked pretty good. He was getting the swing and miss that he gets being a lefty who throws fuzz. Um, the pitch change, I didn't think anything too much of. The Rays are good against left-handed pitching. And at what point do... Like, there's something special about being able to go through an order three times successfully. And not a ton of people can do that. I There's probably a ton of starters who get shelled third time through. The Gen uh, but, Z, the Gen Z effect. Yeah, but it's like, what? what's the change? Because you're going to kill your bullpen if you don't do that either way. And if you have two people who are like that, every your bullpen's the most taxed thing of all time. Well, it's, they weren't just, scared to tax it last year. That's for that's for fucking sure. Well, they're going to pay the price for it right now. Yeah. Uh, they, so I, I like the YJ's pitching stuff. It always fascinates me. Kikuchi thing. Can you do the Kikuchi thing for us? What do you think of it right now? Uh, so... About the worst lineup matchup for him, um, maybe the Braves are like even worse. I looked it up last year. I did a stupid statistic of runs per plate appearance against left-handed pitching, and the Tampa and Atlanta were tied at it's point one four five. The Cubs led at one four seven for some reason. Who knows? Um, yeah, bad matchup. He didn't locate well. He just he couldn't get his fastball in. I don't know if he was trying to or not. It was a lot of arm side fastballs. And but man, he grinded through it. Like it really could have been worse. It really could have been worse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So him and Gosman got the same amount of outs, right? Or did Gosman get one more? They both went four and a third, right? Yeah. Just hilariously different outings, too. That's why baseball's the best, man. Yeah. And, and, and talking of, I guess we can go into the Gosman talk here, and I, I'll, I'll talk about it. I, I'll bring Zoobs into this one. Sometimes, Zoobs, I forget how lucky we are to have Kevin Gosman on yeah, the man. Toronto Blue Jays. Like, we didn't see him the first three games, so it wasn't like having the opening weekend hype type of thing where it's like, holy fuck, we get to watch Kevin Gossman go up against another ace. But just from that first inning, he gets two punch outs, uh, looks unbelievable, locating his pitches, didn't even miss a stride. I know he was injured. He didn't make his first start in spring, pretty deep into spring training. So uh, we are so lucky to have Kevin Gossman. And the Ross Atkins haters out there, he picked Kevin Gossman over Robbie Ray, who is a corpse of a human being right now on his second ball club. So why don't you address that, Rob, uh, <laughs> Ross Atkins haters, that Kevin Gossman is a Toronto Blue Jay making on a fucking steal of a deal compared to other starting pitchers. So what a pleasure it is watching this guy, man, every five days. Yeah, the, the big takeaway looking at Gosman last year was like, man, they just didn't score any runs for him. And like today was a great example of, oh, yeah, if they score at all, for Kevin Gosman, <laughs> he would win 20 games, like pretty handily. He's so good. If you like his pitch map today is just absolute beef, like just dotting fastball, fastball low, fastball middle, fastball in, fastball to both sides, fastball up, and then the splitters just like uh, it, it looks like absolute hell to face. I I I love it. He is an ace. That is the it, to put it so plainly, and and like. I know it the the word beyond the like one, two, three, four, five set in stone sort of thing. Sort of a, a low key, like feels really good to have him come in and pitch game four versus an opening day starter is like a, some acclaim. But it was nice to have him at the end of the series and be like, we need to split. Oh yeah, we have a top single digit pitcher in baseball on the hill for us today. I don't know where you guys have him. I know pitcher list, I think, had him seventh in the whole league. Like He's definitely a single digit. I think you could make the argument for a top five with with Cole out. He's he's so good, and it's I think because the offense gets all the headlines. And as you said, like him replacing Ray was what his first year was really built through. 
I think we sort of lost focus. It's like he might be the best guy on the whole team in terms of where they rank in in the league relative to everybody at their position. Kevin Gosman is like special, man, like really a special guy and and rare to see a, essentially a two pitch guy like climb the ranks and be borderline unhittable when he's really, really feeling it. Yeah. He's uh he he's insane. I, I I yeah, I put him up against anyone, man. It sucks with the playoff stuff. I mean, he wasn't bad last year, just kind of Roy he got Royce Lewis, who is yes. uh injured injured right now. But I will say there has not been more hype for kind of like a non massive prospect pitcher as there ha- has been for this Bowden Francis start tomorrow. Is that a hot take, YJs? <laughs> Everyone's been talking about Bowden Francis. I know we've been kind of spearheading that with the amount we talk about him on this podcast, but this is a very anticipated first start. He for a is guy that going isn't, into a, big... a nightmare with the Astros going over for. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Well, I have a bunch on that. I just have to jump back on one thing. Uh, Zoobs, uh, hanging Chad. <laughs> you you dropped a hanging Chad in front of Johnny and Avery. They were, they were, the fuck you're no they were not in school yet. They were not. They were they were my son's age when Hanging Chad was a thing. Oh, man. Jo- Johnny and Avery are such Atkin shills that they as well bring on 30-year-olds to their team like us. Just disgusting. I'm the Justin Turner of this podcast. You, you, when I, I first showed up, you're like, oof. Now you're like, okay. <laughs> when you give him his spot. There you go. People learn real quick. Thirty one's young. It is very young. young. Well, for me, it's old as fuck. But for many, it's young. <laughs> you'll, you'll you'll learn. Uh, Bowden Astros. So I'm gonna start quick on the Astros. Holy shit! It sucks. They're zero and four. Like yeah. that's that's that shit in my brain. That's just like, oh my god, that's an automatic loss for the Jays. <laughs> automatic. Just yeah. They're gonna go zero and five. They're going to go 0 and 5, but they might because <laughs> Hader's going to be down. Brian Abreu is going to be down. So who's holding your lead? They'll just crush Bowden, but Bowden's not getting crushed, baby. <laughs> the, the Astros are, they're half like terrifying and half like, oh, it's because they're called the Astros and we know what they used to be. Like, Jose Abreu is. Oh my God! It's retirement home stuff. It's he's, <laughs> he is tough to watch. Uh, Chaz is cool. Um, whoever's in center field's not good. There's like some who's DH in it. Like there's some kind of like holes in that lineup. The top four is like, oh my God, get us get us through there. But I'm you know I'm gonna I'm excited to see what velo bowden's gonna hold because right mitch white didn't hold it mitch white was very much like you're dating someone it's like no i'm very neat and tidy and then they move in and you're a slob yeah Uh, (laughs) (laughs) and uh, and if 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 bowden's getting outs you can be a slob go right ahead but man he looked he looked awesome in spring not that not that spring matters because uh Dalton Varsha's popped up how many times already? Um <laughs> Ernie Clement struck out. Like yep. it all yeah. doesn't matter, but he looked awesome. Yeah. I'm he excited will... to see Bowden. I am against who is he facing? Re- Rennie Blanco, Avery? <laughs> who oh. is that? He was great in spring for them. So Ronell? Yes. That's how you Ronell Blanco. Yes. Yeah, I it and you bring up good points with Varsho because in the spring I talked about him being like one of the best hitters in the team. There's a clip of me saying he's gonna be the best hitter in the team this year, or like the most valuable player on the team this year. I said because of his defense and if he's just like good offensively. But he has had some. He had some very very unserious at bats this weekend. Um, swinging at balls, not even near the strike zone, getting blown past by the elevated fastball, which is what his problem was last year. Uh, the hit he got, I have no idea how he hit that ball. Uh, it was like a low ball he hit that just kind of, he had a sword swing that was just launched into the gap. But some of these at-bats from Varsho were were very bad. I'll say it. It just, it, it, they weren't good this weekend. It's it's not a knock on him. It's just unserious at-bats. Maybe it's the new stance doing it. But yeah, what did you see this week from uh, 
Varsho Avery. Like it's just the same thing there, right? I just look like at bats from last year too, right? I, I you can't really tell. I can't tell hitting mechanics mechanics right away because I'm not a hitter. That's not something my eye is trained to do or is close to doing at all. But it's like, was Kevin Kiermaier a lot better at the plate this oh, weekend? Oh, I totally forgot about KK this week. It's yeah, he, nice catch. Nice catch. Yeah. <laughs> yes. They're both also really good at catching the ball. So the one thing I said to you guys, uh, it was like, okay, is why why kind of is Kevin Kiermaier back right now? Like, I just thought Varsho should take the reins and change some things up. And you look at some of the Buffalo guys already. I'm not ready to call anyone up, but that lineup stacked with people who can probably play corner outfield decently well. They had Davis playing left field. I would almost put would have put Ernie at left field today with how that has gone and Davis at second IKF change that all around, but that's for a different day as well. Uh, <laughs> Bar show concerning with all the stuff that was up uh, and the pop-ups as well, but we're th- four days into the season. I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be set in stone on it yet. Yeah. It's good worried. to just talk ball. It's good to just talk ball, but yeah, let's go into the Astro series while we kick it out here. I mean, where are you out here with this, Zoobs? I mean, we've seen this song and dance. Jays go into a series against a team that got swept, that got that just ran into a buzzsaw. Congratulations to Yan- the New York Yankees for their April, March World Series. Wagon they do, of a they team. do it every other year. They do man. it every other year. Great club. <laughs> uh, Juan Soto hitting 600. I mean, I will say this, though. That guy is not a hot take. I would die to have that guy on the fucking Blue Jays. <laughs> he is insane. I was watching him with that bats today. Hater, he just flicks an opposite field single. Just fuck this right into the. It's just, it, it's wild. But Zoobs, where are you at with this series? Are you on panic mode? Like I don't want to be uh, the first team these this Astros team beats, or are you like uh, the do method? They kind of are due to win on Monday. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm taking the that they are coming in pissed off, and we're giving them Bowden Francis in Game One. Nothing that happens in Game One counts. All of these are all these early early matchups. I'm just hoping for splits. Anything above a split is like is candy. I'm not not too much weight early on. I think the pretty tough schedule out of the gate. I think Astros in a bad mood. If they can split it, if they can get out of the Bowden thing alive, maybe have a nice burrito start and then close it out um, with with how? Bassett Kikuchi. I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay with yeah. split or, a, or or like taking taking one. I, I'm really like I have low expectations in this early in the year. This yeah. this this guy thinks he can split three games. I, like that. <laughs> I keep I forgetting. Like I, I thought split. that too, Zoobs. I thought they were playing four. <laughs> if they were playing four against the Astros after four against uh, the Rays, I would have had I would have oh. had a panic attack. Johnny, what we've learned is you and I could never do a podcast together because no one would would actually know. <laughs> I think no, I but think that's what we do. Common man. You yeah, want to you know what the, 100... <laughs> you want to know what the schedule is? Go watch uh, ATL. Okay, that, they have the yeah. schedule in front of them. We don't. But pull it up. Yeah, this series is scary. Uh, it's a scary series. I'm not looking forward to the your dawn matchup uh, mm-hmm. at all ever. I mean, that guy's home runs rock. They're incredible. But no one in this lineup actually really scares me. Besides your besides your dawn Alvarez. Oh, you mean future Blue Jay Alex Bregman doesn't? Scare no, you? he really doesn't. I'm sorry. And I will say he's in- Kyle Tucker's no one. I mean, who's better, him or Preston Tucker? Like- <laughs> yeah, Kyle Tucker's whatever to me. I, he's a fake lefty, good lefty in my mind. I, I'm uh, I'm just doing that. But the Astros really let me down this weekend because now Yankee fans are. Uh, YJ does the retweets. Yankee fans talking about. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Shout out to Cashman getting that big, uh, making that big trade. Bringing in the right coaches, all of this shit <laughs> after four fucking games of the season. They're talking I saw, like I saw John Boy, who was very excited that they didn't put out a punt lineup today. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> things Can't things are different in the Bronx. Things are different. Four yeah, games let... into the season, we're not bringing out a punt lineup. But I will say this Astro series. I know there's no such thing as a look ahead. I'm looking ahead to that Yankee series this week, and I I cannot fucking wait. I believe it's Strowman or Strowman's going Friday, I believe, right? Yes. Strowman will be going Roman, Friday. Yeah. So Strowman Schmidt Gill? Yes. We're getting nasty, nasty Gill. Nasty, Let's nasty go. Gill. <laughs> Where are you out with this Astro series? Because I know Zoob's talked about this, but Avery, I would be happy. I'm in the same boat as Zoob's here, just taking like taking one is is 
fine with me. Taking two, it's like, let's fucking go. Yeah, plan the parade if they take two. Yes. Yes. Um, if we bet with Sports Interaction, it feels like over fest tomorrow. Really? Runs on runs. The Bowden thing, and then why you just telling me everyone worth a shit in the Astros bullpen is afraid to work tomorrow. So well, hater, hater hates work. He's he's a, Josh Hater is a part of the war against work. He just yeah. he's scared to go. He wouldn't uh, work before the ninth. He refused to do it, which is kind of crazy, <laughs> kind of insane that no one really talks about that as much as they should. That Josh Hater's like, oh, I'm not going to. No, no, no I'm not. I'm not going to go to. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I could see one or two. I, I guess we can go to the pitching matchup here because we always do the preview of the pitching matchups uh, for the people. So uh, Bound Francis versus Blanco tomorrow. Barrios versus Valdez, who looked – Valdez looked really bad opening day. Uh, did Ooh. not look good. Or and did Chris the Yankees Bass- make him look bad? Well, yeah, that's true. The buzzsaw. Uh, Chris Bassett versus Javier, uh, game three, and then nice little off day uh, Thursday for the for the boys. But, um, yeah, this is – I could see Bassett shoving this team down, shutting this team down, and then maybe the first two kind of get hit around a little bit uh, by this Astros team. But which game – if you could put money – I know why Jason's the gambling man – which game are they winning this series, YJs? Um, I think I like them. to. It feels crazy. I like them tomorrow. And I am a Framber hater for no reason. <laughs> He's kind of sick. But I did watch a lot of that start because I love my Yankees. And he could not throw a strike. He, that, he did not have any like i haven't seen a pitcher not know where anything's going like that in a long time and he's hittable he is hittable he is hittable. Our, our yankees showed hittable. it <laughs> shout out for dukes uh decent game against them as well so uh yeah it's gonna be this this series ross it's not really a rivalry between the jays and the astros but it's just two teams that are good it's a good color matchup right dave this is a really good color matchup, I think. Oh, the worst jerseys in baseball are what the Astros wore today, though. Yes, Holy the uh, spring training blues. Why in the world do they wear those? And I think Hater I think, with his weird colored glove now and those uniforms were the worst a, t- a professional baseball player had looked on the field in a yeah. long time. Yeah. Holy yeah. I, shit. Those jerseys are the t- the behind the scenes people in the Astros got lazy, didn't want to do laundry on Saturday, so they pulled out the spring training, uh, the spring training blues <laughs> uh, for the people. But uh, I I like the stadium. I like Minute Maid Park. I think it's I, it's great. It's a great visual to watch games there, uh, especially when the Jays are playing. I know last year or two years ago we had the, the infamous Bradley Zimmer home run and uh, Zach Collins home run off of Justin Verlander. So uh, some great memories there at uh, Minute Maid Park, but. Uh, this this series is gonna. It, it sucks. The Jays have to do all of these series that I'm looking forward to early in the year. Uh, but that's just the bed that the schedule uh, makers made for the boys. But Zooms, what about you? Which game are you most confident in in this series that the Jays are gonna take? Uh, probably Game Four. No. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I like the Brio start. I think that matchup. I think that matchup. You're gonna get the. You'll get the anger out of the way. So they go. The the Astros are one and four. Jason can take a step back. I think I think Rios it represents sort of a nice a nice mix and a nice matchup for them. Um, I'll take it. I'll take the Brio start in game two. Bow play tomorrow. Everyone's thoughts. I think so. Next spasm. That's a twenty four hour thing. It's like, it's like a stomach bug. Yeah, I don't know. How do you get a neck spasm? That's what I wonder. I don't know. Like, is it? Don't don't ask. I'm not even gonna. <laughs> I'm not even gonna ask that. But. Uh, yeah, great series uh, coming up here. Then we got the Yankees this weekend, which is, God damn it, I, I just love playing in the yeah, Bronx. The, inter- the interaction for all of us oh, here on Twitter great. is going to be great. awesome. It's great. I that's when I like that's when my death threats in my DMs are at the all time high as via Yankee fan. Um, so the Jays, I I would sacrifice the Jays getting swept in Houston if it meant a, se- meant a series win in. Uh, New York. I'll take that's that's a hill I'm willing to die on. Get swept get swept at Houston fine. But if you win in the Bronx against the Yankees, then I get to dunk on Yankees fans uh until the next series they face them. So that's where I'm kind of at with that. But before we end this, I did want to go into uh the Vladdy talk because I, I saw his at bats look substantially better. I know we talked about it earlier, but he looks more patient at the plate. His swing like the thing that was Vladdy last year was he was doing the daddy hacks in pitchers counts. 
Now he's doing the Dottie Hawks and hitters counts. And I noticed that today, uh, two, one ball, two, one pitch against, I believe it was Clevenger. Vladdy just wanted to hit the ball through the scoreboard, which is fine. I'm fine with doing Dottie Hawks on a two, one pitch. He's patient at the plate. He's swinging out his pitches. I know Avery did a breakdown about this on Twitter, right? Avery talked about the pitches that he was, all the pitches that he swung at. He swung he at does, all, yeah, all of them, you mean? Yes, all the pitches he swung at, whatever. Yeah. But he does Every look great. One. YJ's, where are you out here with Vladdy? Like, do you think he has turned a leaf in a pr- approach-wise at the plate? Or are you just I, are you just thinking it's a little bit too small of a sample size to figure that out? Both, both. Um, I think his, his, he looks more athletic at the plate if you can look that he he just his swing looks better and it's like the two hand where it's like like he's he's just cutting it off so it's just like all the velocity just hits a wall rather than like letting it go all the way through not that it matters but it just looks way better it looks like he did something which is like all you can ask. Like, look like you tried. Look like you did something to improve. And he hit an awesome home run. Oh my yeah. God. That would Oh my God. That almost murdered a stingray in center field. That that home run gave me chills. It did. Zoobs, where are you here? Where are you out here with Vladdy? Because I know you have been a kind of on the fr- on the front lines with me about like just it's it's not disrespect to Vladdy just he hasn't been a generational hitter the last two seasons that's not a hot take that's not us being mean it's just true where are you out on the Vladdy train going to this year are you drinking the Kool-Aid right now like I am because I'm Vladdy pilled yeah I, I feel like if you're a Blue Jays fan like you you may as well be Vladdy pilled like you're I don't know why you would watch and be like I don't think Vladdy's gonna be good it's like I don't know what your basis on the team being good or being worth watching will be then I mean it, uh, YJ's mentioned it but like it's amazing what a 450 foot home run can do for your reputation. And I think we see that as like, if he hadn't hit a 450 bomb, it would have been like, yeah, pretty good weekend. He was selective. He, he took his walks when he had to. It's like, no, he hit, he, he did the thing that he, that he does better than anybody, which is hit the ball fucking really hard, really far. Uh, I agree that it, it, as much as there was a lot of noise last year about what might've been wrong and the weird power edge against lefties, like, Ultimately, for me, it did come down to pitch selection and and leaving the stuff away uh, for absolute must parts of the count, not early in the count, and taking those daddy hacks when you're getting the pitches you can really swing at because he does that better than just about anybody, like really makes people pay with mistakes. With that comes some first pitch ground outs on middle, middle 92 that happens too. But, you know, you, you you take it. I'm I'm in on a, on, a, on a bounce back here. Maybe not 2021, but better than last year by a lot and probably better than 2022 as well. It seems impossible that he should hit less than 30 home runs if he's healthy. It just, like, doesn't seem like that should be possible. Yeah. And yet he does it. Like, I think last year his max was five or six home runs in a month. Like, he's a guy that should do that in, in two weeks. That shouldn't be a, that shouldn't be a monumental thing for, oh, Body hit three home runs this week and he hit three next week. That should be like, that should happen a couple of times a year. Um, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm in on, on hopefully this, this, what he started with a nice solid four game base where he took his walks when they were given to him and, and knew like you could sort of tell which at bats they just weren't going to go. They weren't going to give into him and which they were going to challenge him. I think him, as long as over the long term he is committed to continuing to do that, I think he's going to have a really big year because he's just, he's so talented and our expectations are so high because he's so talented. I think, I think a big Vladdy year is like not a crazy ask and would go an awful long way. If he was good at all last year, I think we're framing the way the last season went a lot differently. Do we, what, what do you guys take into account with him being the two hole hitter? Cause that's a, I love it. Yeah, me too. You put your, yep. do you think that's them? Uh, roster or lineup construction saying they had their best two hole hitter there last year as Bo, and it's like okay, it's time for Vladdy to be that. I think so. I think it encourages them to be a little more patient, and it sort of plays into, it sort of plays into you know take your walks because Bo's behind you. Like I know it's hitters are going to hit and guys are going to do what they what they do, but Vlo, but Bo's profile is so aggressive 
put the ball in play, hit the ball the other way more than anybody else in the league and hit line drives. And Springer wasn't on enough last year for that to be as powerful as it could be. And if people are going to pitch around Vlad the way that they do, and he's going to juice that OBP with cheap walks, you may as well have somebody ahead of him uh, sliding into second for those ground ball. Why, Jace? Yeah. Would you? I'm in the, I'm in the way that I think Bo should hit one and Springer should hit three. I know. I I can't even start thinking about it because it's like, hey Springer, we're thinking about moving you, and he's just like, no, no, you're you're actually not going to move <laughs> me. And they'll go, you know, we had a good constructive conversation. Thank you, George. <laughs> so I don't I don't know. Like honestly, if you really want to get stupid nerdy, it's probably Turner. And then, then you go back to being a normal baseball fan and like, oh, the the leadoff guy can't run. I'm gonna kill myself. So, yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah, no, that's fair. That's a fair. That's a fair comment to me. But the the Vlad hitting second is low key interesting on a couple levels because part of me is like they think he's gonna be the best hitter, and then another part of me is like it's also a punishment to Vlad because. I've I've never talked to a major league baseball player, but I hear all the quotes like Judge and Soto both want to hit third. All yeah. of these like huge amazing hitters, they don't wake up and go, "Oh man, I hope I hope they pencil me in hitting second this year." <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is this would be a huge dream come true. Like Mike Trout hates it. Everyone hates hitting second, and they should like it because it's the spot where your best hitter goes now. So it's kind of a twofold, like, hey, you weren't actually that good, but we also think you are going to be that good. That's fair. That's fair. I used to hit in the six hole, so um, <laughs> that's that's where they used to Be- sneak me. Best hitter, best second hitter goes there. Yeah, you know? I, I, isn't that the second that cleanup? When I hit second eight, cleanup? I'm a cook. I'd say I was double uh, double cleanup. Um, <laughs> but anyways, man, it's just, it's good to talk ball. This is long overdue to have uh, YJs and Zoobs on the podcast, man. You could find Zoobs on Twitter at the Zoobs and YJs at YJs. His profile picture is a picture of a cat in biker gear. Um, but yeah, Zoobs, great biker podcast. Gear. The, biker gear. And <laughs> Zoobs, if, if, if there's wrestling guys here, wrestling brain, Zoobs does that as well. He's locked less than, in on Less that. than Jays as well. Less than Jays. Yeah, less than Jays. I, I, did I not already say that? I might have, I might have not, not said that. Halfway I'm, through. I'm hungover. It's fine. Um, but anyways, and YJ's, YJ's, are, what is our space schedule looking like during the season? Yeah, what what's your space think? schedule? Um, when I feel like it. Okay. Hell You'll announce days. it on it's Twitter. Not, That's fine. Sounds like off days. That sounds like off days. Thursday. That's what I read from that. Yeah, Thursday. So <laughs> YJ's space on Thursday. Uh, love you guys, man. You guys are obviously a massive part of this. So uh, yeah, we thank appreciate you, you guys, uh, your support, and obviously coming on here, but. We go ball back on the TVs, man. This is uh, electric. We will be streaming the game tomorrow, me and Avery, grinding away. Astros, Bowden Francis, bump day. And uh, eight let's 10 have start, our... man. You got to cut into bedtime. 8 10. A little bit late. Yeah. Doc will Sorry, be in bed boys. by 9 30. He'll be missing it. But uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe, like, leave a comment, let us know how we did. And uh, let's have ourselves a week. Any last comments, Zoobs and YJs for the people? Dream come true to have on, me on here, guys. Really appreciate <laughs> yeah. the time. This was uh, this was awesome. I'm, I'm thrilled the ball is back. Jo- go Jays. Yep. Uh, sweet dream. Beautiful nightmare. Go Jays. There we go. Wow. And Avery, any last comments? I mean, no. Uh, no that was beautiful. Avery's buzzing. Both of them. Avery's smiling ear to ear. He loves ball being on, man. I love hanging out with my friends, man. This yeah. is awesome and talking ball. True ball knower. Thank you All guys right. tuning in. Gate 14 forever. Mm-hmm.